Now, we've got the right person here with us for it. Michael Pond is co-head of U.S. Interest Rate Strategy at Barclays Capital. And of course, John Riding still with us here from RDQ Economics. Uh, Michael, let's address first, though, this conundrum. It's, it's an interesting thing. John uh, Deirdre and I were just chatting about it during the break. Uh, when it's risk off, you go to your safe haven, which is treasuries, cash, same thing, treasuries. Uh, what, do, what do you do when treasuries are the risk? Absolutely. So bond market investors are sort of uh, stuck like a deer in a headlights right now. Yields really haven't gone anywhere since early June, stuck in this right, right around 3% on the 10-year. What has been happening is the yield curve has been steepening as investors shed 30-year notes because of credit risk, but are flocking into the front end of the Treasury market because of that safe haven bid that you just mentioned. So deer in the headlights, meaning they, they literally don't know what to do. It's a totally new, as John said before, I mean, there's no playbook for this. Right? Absolutely. We've never seen this before, at least not in the U.S. And frankly, if we have a, a default, we, we wouldn't certainly don't expect a, a missed coupon payment. But you could start to see the Treasury missing payments on other obligations. And that increases the risk of a double dip, a slowdown in the economy from an already tepid recovery. That means that investors should be moving into treasuries. But on the other hand, there's a strong risk of a downgrade. And that means investors should be moving out of treasury. So what we're seeing is investors move out of the long end and into the front end, hence a, a curve steepener rather than just an, an outright sell off or rally here. John, what do you think? I mean, clearly you've spent some time thinking about this as well. Well, I think what we have is actually a bifurcated set of investors. On the one hand, if the trade is about the dollar as a store of value, it's been get out of the dollar, right? So people have bought uh, Australian dollars, they've bought Canadian dollars. Exactly, going and to other sovereign debt as well. And they bought gold. When gold has been the ultimate trade here, it can't default. The Fed can't print any more of it. Uh, and that's been a winning trade. And I expect gold will continue to run through uh, uh, these uh, problems and the easy money situation we're going to have. On the other hand, the equity markets. 35 points from its high in the S&P. It's like there's nothing going on in the world. Uh, and 10-year treasuries at 3%. So it's almost like there's two totally different sets of expectations. And they're certainly not congruent. They don't fit together for a, an easy market store. And it's because, the, well, I think I because of this... W w there's no playbook. As you said, there's no playbook for this, so it's a totally new situation. Sarah Eisen has a question now from the newsroom. Sarah? Well, Michael, this one's for you. Sure, there's Swiss francs and gold, but there's not much else to do for safety. Maybe investors just keep buying treasuries because they just can't wrap their idea around this and there's nowhere else to go. That's right, Sarah. So what we're hearing from large foreign investors is that while it, on a downgrade, they might like to move away from treasuries, uh, frankly, there's nowhere else to go. Large, large foreign investors, you know, if they were to go into gold or other commodities, they would frankly swamp those markets. And it's not clear that they can actually move away from treasuries in the near term because they have dollars to invest. Over time, the diversification that we've seen away from treasuries can continue uh, and could accelerate. But again, that's a long term phenomenon. That's not likely something we're, we're uh, that shouldn't be something we're likely to see in the in the very near term. John, what do you I mean, some people will have to get out of treasuries if there's a downgrade, right? I mean, there are rules for this. But let's say you're in fixed income. Get out of treasuries into what? The GSE debt will get downgraded if the U.S. debt gets downgraded. But if you have to hold AAA debt and treasuries are not AAA... Well, well, but, but, but then what are, you down, you, what are you down to? Like four companies and... Uh, uh, Matt, if I could jump in on this, we, we've looked through prospectuses, we looked through collateral agree agreements, and most references to treasuries uh, just reference treasuries without a AAA rating. However, the risk here is that on a downgrade of the U.S., other entities get downgraded. Uh, so S&P has noted that they might downgrade Fannie and Freddie, they might downgrade insurance companies or other uh, entities that have ties to the U.S. And it's those entities where there's often a ratings attached to holdings. And so what we could see, again, ironically, is investors have to sell those assets and go into treasuries. Right, Michael. I mean, ratings is really just a relative game, right? And it's based around U.S. treasuries and the safety of U.S. government debt, which would suggest there won't be that much forced selling. That's right. And investors may see uh, treasuries as, as less safe than they had before, but still the, the safest asset in the U.S. John, let me ask you, what happens to other companies? Okay. Michael mentions other uh, AAA rated corporate debt. You mentioned that as well. But what happens to other ratings that are 
basically based on the, the safety of U.S. debt here. Well, the, the rates of change have been clear on this, as far as I can see. It's if you are closely linked to the U.S. government, like your Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, the home loan banks, you're going to get downgraded. If your bank debt that has been guaranteed by the uh, emergency program that was brought in in 2008, where bank debt is guaranteed on the U.S. full faith and credit uh, through the FDIC, that's going to get downgraded. If you are a company that's removed, you're, you're going to be robust, they say, to like a one or two notch downgrade. So if it's AAA to AA, it, it, it won't affect those companies. But the truth of the matter is, if you actually go through U.S. company ratings, there are not that you talk, you can count them on one hand. The non financial companies, for example, I think there's four of them that are AAA rated in the U.S. But we'll have companies, it's an interesting concept, we'll have companies that operate inside the boundaries of the U.S. that will be AAA rated while the government is not. Correct. Uh, unfortunately, that's all we have time for. Thanks so much for joining us, Michael Pond Thanks, from man. Barclays.